good, good morning to everyone, my moderator, uh, Professor Zaro, my fellow panelists, uh, members of the media, as well as uh, members of the audience. I came with not much to say. <laughs> Most of what I've been uh, talked about on this issue has been discussed quite widely in the media. Uh, when I was asked if I have a presentation to show anything from my PC, I said no. Uh, I changed my mind after listening to both my earlier two panelists. I, I hope nobody takes things personally this morning. Uh, Dr. Han is a really nice guy. And so is Tan Sri Kasim, to be honest. But it is a little sad. It is a little sad when your key agency to fight corruption in this country practically goes to every public presentation starting off by defensively saying there's only so much we can do. It is quite sad that there doesn't seem to be an attempt to, um, what do you call it, make use of whatever powers there is to clamp down on the nonsense that's going on up there. Yes, I completely agree with Dr. Han that there are limitations to this law. And these are issues we raised. And uh, when this law was actually passed in 2009, one year after I was elected in Parliament. One example is very simply uh, the Act provision that's actually in Hong Kong Act, as well as in Indonesia, but not available in Malaysia, that is to, to have those with unjustifiable wealth prove the origins of their wealth. That's a very simple amendment to the Act that can cover a lot, of, a lot more people uh, who we believe uh, are involved in acts of corruption. But even looking at the existing laws, and I thank the uh, University of Nottingham for providing free Wi-Fi here, <laughs> I managed to pull up the MACC Act. And if you look at the MACC Act, some of the terms that are in there, they are pretty harsh. Um, okay, I'll just use one example. You can look at the, the relevant section 21 to uh, 22. Uh, I'll just use one example of offence of using office or position for gratification. Now, any officer of a public body who uses his office or position for any gratification, whether for himself, his relative, or associate, commits an offence. And the law also says, for the purposes of subsection 1 above, an officer of a public body shall be presumed until the contrary is proved to use his office or position for any gratification, whether for himself, his relative, or associate, when making any decision or takes any action in relation to any matter in which such officer or any relative or associate of his has an interest, whether directly or indirectly. This is a fairly harsh court. It's almost, almost, uh, not yet, bordering on guilty until proven innocent. Those are very strong laws that MACC has today to utilize to take action against corrupt individuals. I completely agree, Dr. Han, that it is still not enough. Not enough in the sense that there are certain coverage that are not there, and this has been discussed with MACC. But there are laws in the current act which allows MACC to use its powers to trap the corrupt individual. I have been in discussions and forums with Tan Sri Abu Qasim where Tan Sri Abu Qasim tells me outright, 
criminal breach of trust is not a corrupt act, as defined by the law. It is to be investigated by the police, not by MACC. It's like, take this away from me. I just want to focus on this part of my job. Everything else is not part of my KPI, so I cannot be blamed for not catching people for conducting CBT. But people conduct CBT for <coughs> pecuniary benefits, for gratification. And all we need to do is find where the gratification is. And if you look at the definition of gratification, it is actually uh, quite clear. Being an agent, he corruptly accepts or obtains or agrees to accept, attempts to obtain from any other person or uh, for himself or for any other person any gratification as an inducement or a reward. And gratification okay, is defined where he did not have the power, right or opportunity so to do, show or forbear. And gratification B, which is important, even if he accepted the gratification without intending to do so, show or forbear. Which means that if he received the benefit from a contractor without the intent of that benefit being the reward for giving contract to the contractor, it is still defined as gratification within the act. So civil servants have to be very careful. You can't just simply go out for meals and holidays with anybody. And this brings me to some of the examples that uh, the Public Accounts Committee, I'm a member of the Public Accounts Committee since 2008. This is my second term in the Public Accounts Committee. And having been in Public Accounts Committee, you sit down with the relevant officers from various ministries, uh, you see and hear a lot of things. In fact, you see more than you hear because you look at the demeanor of the officers sitting in front of you, the way they answer questions or the way they uh, branch away from the questions you ask uh, and stuff like that. But what happens is that in one of the key papers we did, that is... Uh, Pop clan free zone. We all know about the case where letters of support was issued, government have to bail out 4.6 billion, the operations of PKFZ would not have enough money to pay back this loan and the interest cost over 50 years would amount to a total bill to the government of 12.5 billion ringgit. And this number is not concocted by me, it's uh, estimated by PricewaterhouseCoopers based on numbers provided by Portland Authority themselves. Okay? Now, some of the findings in the PKMZ report, let me first go to page 10. It's a very long report. The disappointing thing is... Uh, there seems to be no outcome. Okay, pandangan show jawatan kuasa. This is the findings of the PAC. Okay, I'll just read this one, this one particular section. Ketua Setiausaha Kementerian Pengangkutan dan Pengurus Besar LPK, LPK is the marker. Uh, Pelabuhan Klang, uh, Port Klang Authority gagal mematuhi arahan daripada kerajaan dan kementerian kewangan dalam urusan perolehan tanah ini adalah kerana sungguh pun kerajaan bersetuju memberikan peluang kepada KDSB Kuala Dimensi dilantik untuk menambah dan membina infrastruktur asas secara design and build namun LPK diminta merunding harga bagi kerja-kerja dengan KDSB dan mendapatkan kelulusan daripada Kementerian Kewangan sekiranya ia melebihi 100 juta ringgit. Okay, so basically in this just simple sentence there are many others. Okay, the Secretary General of Transport Ministry and the General Manager of PKA 
are guilty of outrightly breaking instructions from the Ministry of uh, Finance. If I look at the one of the, one of the outcomes of that is the finding by Price Waterhouse Coopers, okay, with regards to interest being paid on the land acquisition. So the price of the land, which is uh, 20, 24 ringgit per square feet, okay, uh, already incorporated future interest. What happened is that when PKA then agreed to buy that land over installment payment of 30 years, if I'm not wrong, uh, 15 years, sorry, okay, they added interest on that. So what Price Waterhouse found was essentially we are paying interest on top of interest. We have inflated the price. And uh, it's quite clear here, the additional interest cost uh, so the additional interest that the government paid for this piece of land is 730 million ringgit. And we have found recently that PKA board have decided to withdraw action against KDF uh, for the WNC to reclaim back this additional interest paid of 730 million. Okay? Page 17. Something B, this this B item B. Tindakan pengurus besar LPK menandatangani perjanjian pembangunan bernilai 2.25 bilion adalah menyalahi peraturan kewangan kerajaan kerana beliau tidak mendapat kelulusan daripada Kementerian Kewangan. Tindakan beliau juga telah tidak selaras dengan kehendak Port Authorities Act yang menetapkan bahawa beliau perlu mendapatkan kelulusan daripada uh, lembaga pengarah LPK terlebih dahulu. Now, while this case, the way it is drafted, it is not an issue for MACC to handle, but it is an offence under the law of the country, which means the relevant party to charge the pengurus besar yeah. is the Attorney General. <coughs> Has there been one case by the Attorney General at all against these officers. No. None. None. The findings of the PAC is very clear. We spent this this was in the last term, this was our biggest case. Okay? None. Next one, page 23. Yeah. It's a big one. The big fish. Jawatan kuasa dimaklum oleh peguam negara bahawa tiga surat sokongan telah yang dikeluarkan oleh Datuk Sri Changkong Choi, Menteri Pengangkutan dan ketiga-tiga surat aku janji yang dikeluarkan oleh pengurus besar LPK secara implisit atau bersifat jaminan daripada kerajaan yang meletakkan tanggungan ke atas kerajaan untuk memastikan ada peruntukan yang membolehkan lembaga pelabuhan Klang memenuhi obligasi obligasinya di bawah perjanjian pembangunan. Oleh itu, siasatan rapi perlu dibuat oleh SPRM terhadap perkara ini kerana ia dikeluarkan tanpa kelulusan daripada Kementerian Kewangan di mana dikendaki di bawah Seksyen 14 Akta, Akta Tata Cara Kewangan 1957. Ia juga boleh disabit dengan kesalahan jenayah pecah amanah Criminal Breach of Trust di bawah Seksyen 409 yang dibaca bersama Seksyen 409B Kanun Kesekseraan. Now the finding by the PAC on this matter is very clear. It is clear as light and day. Chang Kong Choi issued letters of support which resulted in the government having to guarantee 4.6 billion of loans without approval from the Ministry of Finance. Clear cut. Now when the Attorney General did prosecute Tan Kong Choi, Chang Kong Choi, but they prosecuted Chang Kong Choi on the crime of misleading the Prime Minister. 
of which subsequently the case was dropped because the other Minister of Transport was also accused of the same, misleading the Prime Minister, Tun Dr. Mahathir, and Tun Dr. Mahathir went up on a witness box and said, I wasn't misled. <laughs> and the whole, whole case collapsed. And because Tun Sri Ling, Tun Ling Leong Six case collapsed, Chan Kong Choi's case was withdrawn. When the easier case to prove that he issued a letter of support without approval from the Ministry of Finance, that wasn't taken. Now, is there gratification? We don't know. No, that's for SPRM to find out. But I'm 100% sure it will not be difficult to find. You know, when the other transport minister came, the one who is uh, in the wilderness at the moment, Hong uh, Kiet, he came to the PAC. We asked this question, and this is minuted in the PKMZ report. You can download it from the parliamentary website. Okay? I asked him if he received any benefit from KDSP in any form, whether entertainment or, 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 or stuff like that. His reply was very terse. He said, I, I have Miyak Jahat, he scolded me. He didn't answer the question. <laughs> Two days later, it was found that he was uh, jet-setting around the world in a private jet supplied by Datuk Sri Tiong King Singh, CEO then of KDSB. And then KDSB even sued Tiong King Singh for the charges incurred <laughs> uh, over these uh, flights that were, I assume, supposed to be free. Now, it's not difficult to find gratification. And gratification is defined very broadly in the act. It doesn't have to be cash in your bank. It can be benefits in kind of any form. So there is a lot of, um, what do you call it? There is a lot of uh, this in the, PK, uh, the, the, the PAC reports and the Auditor General reports that have been produced. I'll go to a few other examples, some very blatant ones. The most, the latest report has been tabled in Parliament, tabled on Wednesday or Thursday this week, the second or the last day of Parliament this week. This is on the peralatan operasi yang tidak digunakan, cobra cutting extinguisher, Kementerian Kesejahteraan Bandar, Perumahan dan Kerajaan Tempatan, local housing, local government and housing ministry for the. Jabatan Bomber, the Fire Rescue Department. Let me read you the chronology in this report, and you tell me if there's something wrong. 6th of February 2006. Kelulusan perolehan secara rundingan terus dari Kementerian Kewangan dengan syarat ada keperluan Jabatan uh, Bomber dan Penyelamat Malaysia telah diserahkan kepada Ketua Setiausaha Kementerian uh, Kesejahteraan Bandar Perumahan dan Kerajaan Tempatan. Okay, so basically the Finance Ministry gave an approval for direct negotiations subject to the needs requirement of the uh, Ministry of Housing and Local Government. 13 of February, one week later. Okay, surat penolakan penolakan tawaran telah dikeluarkan oleh Jabatan Bomber kepada Ketua Setiausaha Kementerian uh, uh, Kesejahteraan Bandar Perumahan dan Kerajaan Tempatan kerana uh, of the reasons given so the fire rescue department wrote a letter to the chief, chief uh, the KSU the secretary general of the Ministry of Housing and Local Government saying that they don't want to buy this item. 22nd of February, satu surat penolakan tawaran telah dibuat oleh Jabatan Bomber kepada Ketua Setiausaha Perbendaharaan Kementerian Kewangan. So, accordingly, the Ministry of Housing wrote a letter to the Ministry of Finance, we don't want this item, we don't need it. Okay, it was quite clearly stated in the letter, we don't need it. Okay. On the 22nd of June, four months later, 
Lembaga Perolehan Kementerian Kesejahteraan Bandar, Perumahan dan Kerajaan Tempatan telah bersetuju menerima keputusan rundingan harga yang diberikan kepada syarikat kejuteraan asas jaya sendiri bahan. Four months later, they accepted the request to offer via direct negotiations to purchase this cobra cutter extinguishers uh, from this particular company, Syarikat Kesejuteraan Asa Jaya. 28, very fast, within a week later, Surat Setuju Terima telah dikeluarkan kepada kontraktor Syarikat Kesejuteraan Asa Jaya dan telah ditandatangani pada 6 hari bulan Julai. Another week later, bagi pembelian 24 unit cobra cutting extinguisher E300 bernilai 10 juta ringgit, 10, 10 million. Okay, and then four months later, mesyuarat rundingan harga bagi tambahan pembelian 92 unit lagi telah diadakan dan telah dipengurusi oleh timbalan ketua uh, setiausaha. So they bought another 92 units. Total cost 116 million ringgit. The reason why this came up in the first place at all is because all this equipment were never used and is being written off in the financial books. Wow. Okay, that's the finding by the Auditor General. So how did this happen? When we asked the, 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 the Housing Ministry official, they put the blame on Ministry of Finance. They said, we don't want this. But Ministry of Finance insisted, what can we say? <laughs> of course, we would argue, and we did argue in the PAC, by right, if you really don't want it, say, don't want that. <laughs> but the Ministry of Finance, unfortunately, is also headed by the Prime Minister. And unfortunately, in this case, on 3rd of February, so I jump chronology a bit, go back to 3rd of February, okay, it was stated, tawaran pembelian peralatan keselamatan Cobra Cutting oleh syarikat kejuruteraan asas jaya ini diminikan oleh Yang Berhormat Menteri Kewangan yang menyatakan bahawa pihak bomba mengakui kebaikan alat yang berteknologi tinggi ini dan pihak bomba sepatutnya memiliki peralatan ini. So the Prime Minister minted in the offer letter by the company okay, to directly to the, the Finance Minister who is also the Prime Minister and the Prime Minister put a nota, uh, a note in the letter uh, please uh, 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 the, the wording was something to the effect that the Fire Rescue Department should have this uh, with the disclaimer, okay, if they need it, uh, if they decide that they need it. Now, who is at fault here? The problem in a lot of cases that is raised is who is at fault here? Now, of course, the Prime Minister and Ministry of Finance, they argue that, no, 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 we didn't force it down the throat of housing local government ministry. We actually asked them to study whether they need it first. But we have already approved it. <laughs> and then the housing local government officers will say, we don't really need it, but this came pressing from Ministry of Finance and even given the, the, the pride in principle approval from the Minister of Finance. Do they reject it and risk? Now this, this Treasury KSU is very powerful and risk the wrath of your finance minister, your prime minister, as well as your treasury secretary general. Now, there's, there's something really wrong with this process is, why is the Ministry of Finance deciding what the fire rescue department wants? Now, if you ask me as a lay person, something is happening behind the scenes. Huh? You know? But if you ask, our agencies, as, as at this point in time, no proof. And who would dare go investigate the Prime Minister? <laughs> Seriously, who would dare go investigate the Prime Minister? The evidence are there. The notation signed by the Prime Minister is there. 
But of course, the easy way out is, oh, the Prime Minister didn't force it, the Prime Minister said uh, only if the fire department really wants it or needs it. You have got cases in uh, universities, University Trangganu, they want to build a ship for educational purposes to teach their marine engineers. They hire a ship contractor. The ship contractor fails to deliver. Uh, ship needs to be, what do you call it, licensed or given the stamp of approval by certain authorities. I know I have to sum up. Sorry, I have too many interesting cases. <laughs> Politicians refuse to give up the mic. Um, yeah, and when they couldn't comply with this independent body, what they did was they changed the compliance body. They changed the compliance body to a body owned by the contractor or have the same shareholder as the contractor. And the ship got approved. Is there corruption in this case? Your guess is as good as mine. But we see no action taken against these individuals, although these individuals are named in the report. And uh, the last one that we'll, I will bring up is the most recent case of the KLIA2, where we have clearly stated in the Public Accounts Committee that at the very least, the management of MAHP was completely useless. That's at best. At worst, perhaps there was a lot of funny things going on behind the scenes on the decision that uh, resulted in 4 billion ringgit being spent to build our new low-cost airport. I know our Auditor General, to a certain extent, his hands are tied because he cannot simply go in and audit any company. He has to get approval from the Ministry of Finance. I understand that. Okay. So not everything he can go in, okay? But the reason for not going in cannot be because it has been audited by one of the big firms. The audit by big firms is different from an audit by the Auditor General. Auditor General has done very good work in a lot of the government agencies. And why? Because very simply, when I pay for an item, one million ringgit, what price Waterhouse Coopers will say, for example, uh, you really paid one million ringgit, show me the proof you paid one million ringgit. Show me the invoice from the company who charged one million ringgit. Everything in order, transactions in order, paid to the right account, put it into accounts, I will tabulate the profit and loss figure. That is the role of PricewaterhouseCoopers, KPMG and so on. The role of the Auditor General is say that, why the hell do we want this one million ringgit item anyway? No. Is this a fair price? Is the market price only 200? thousand ringgit and we paid one million ringgit. So it's a completely different role between the Auditor General and the audit firms that are in the public. And in our um, very thick, you can compare, I've talked about Cobra Cutter just now. This is the size of the report. This is the KLIA2 report. <laughs> okay? We... The, this is my last line. Uh, I, 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 Seek the indulgence of the moderator. Uh, this is the last line of the show, that means the conclusion or the recommendations by the PAC. Menggeser kerajaan mengarahkan Jabatan Audit Negara membuat pengauditan menyeluruh ke atas segala penemuan yang dibuat oleh uh, Jabatan Kuasa Kira-Kira Wang Negara atas dasar kepentingan kerajaan. So you would note that we actually request that the government instruct the Auditor General to be able to go in. Okay, because currently, uh, Auditor General cannot go into MEHP. It's not in one of the list of companies that they can go in and investigate. So we are requesting that the government instruct the AG to go in and investigate based on all the findings that we have found in the PAC. And we hope the Minister of Transport will support our recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe that the role of the auditors that submitted the accounts of SSM obviously is signed by Deloitte, which is properly tabulated, uh, 1 plus 1 equals 2. Uh, but I think the issues that the public would be concerned about, as an example, is when the 1MDB raised bonds and paid fees 
commissions and expenses in excess of 10% uh, to raise these bonds when other governments uh, raise bonds for 1-2%. So if I buy from Charles Coopers, as long as I can see that Goldman Sachs received the 10%, uh, is officially receipt given, payment given to Goldman Sachs, that's what I put in the accounts. Uh, price one, uh, this Deloitte is not going to ask how come you pay 10%, other people pay 5% or 2% or 0.1%. So I think the role for our government auditors is to look at the performance of it and value of it. If uh, our companies are actually uh, spending uh, our money in, uh, in, uh, in uh, what do you call it, uh, value for money, uh, I think that's the, that's the concern. <laughs> Uh, with regards to the question, with regards to whether the MACC is under the Prime Minister's Department or the uh, Prime Minister's Department or the Parliament, it's actually placed under the Parliament. So it's actually not under the Prime Minister's Department. But of course, the Parliament's role is we have members of the Parliament from both sides of the House sitting in the committee meeting, I think, once a year uh, for a couple of hours on the report. So the two days now. Uh, and uh, the, the more important committee is actually the other committee that the operational reviews committee. The parliamentary committee actually have fairly limited roles and functions. Although they sit at least for two, year, two days, they give some feedback and that's about it. So that's the extent of parliamentary oversight over MHC. The stronger committee is the operational review committee, which uh, Dr. Han mentioned just now. I'd just like to briefly conclude by saying that it's not an easy job. I mean, to be fair to MACC, while I have my criticisms, to be fair to them, as well as Tanzania's uh, Amri, it is not an easy job because how it is, it is very easy to hide corruption under stupidity. So a, 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 someone who has committed an offense will admit that, oh, I was stupid, sorry, rather than say, I took money. And it's very difficult to disprove stupidity. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll give just one example before I conclude. Uh, in the KRA2 case, the airport consultant recommended the finger peer system, which is the old LCCT system in the expanded fashion. They called for a tender with specification asking for finger peer system. They had eight tenders, seven submitted finger peer system. One submitted satellite terminals, the one with sky view so to not walk very far. They picked the satellite version. Now, is that something fishy with corruption, or is that just pure stupidity on the part of MHD? How do you prove that? I think that's where we hope that our enforcement officers will work a bit harder. Okay, we all suspect something behind the scenes. Uh, there's no proof as yet, there's no weight hurling, there's no smoking gun, but surely <coughs> not all these actions boils down to stupidity and incompetence.